Okay, so I've brought my, my um, color reference over. I'm in Illustrator now looking at my black and white vector, but I've resaved it and I cleaned up all the empty layers. So now only essential layers are there. Let's look at the different components. I have the little swoosh. I have the banner underneath and the side text. I have the, the key text and I have that little background flare and then I have my color reference. Now in Illustrator, how do we color? We unlock the element we want to color first, so I'm gonna stick with my key element here. And we make sure it's unlocked so we can select it. And then I can use a small selection tool and select individual letters. And I'm just going to steal the colors directly from these. Remember, this is not replacing my black and white vector. That's saved as another EPS. This is my color vector. Now, the beauty of, of coloring within Illustrator is this will now be the clean EPS, but then you can always modify it within Photoshop. This just gives me a more colorful core to modify. Because the problem with using layer styles and things in Photoshop without individually painting in all these letters, it would do the same thing, same thing to all of them. So I want this kind of diversity. And this dropper tool is great. It gives me the exact color, but not the texture of this raster element or of this vector element, because I had live traced this. Now, even though my fill, I'm changing from black to this color, I want to keep my white, my white uh, outlines around it, which are also filled paths, not strokes. But they started out as strokes that then I outlined. And another great thing about Photoshop and Illustrator, they teach you the shortcuts as you go. And I'm not nearly as familiar with all the Illustrator shortcuts as the Photoshop shortcuts, but if you hover over it, the, the eyedropper, for instance, it says eyedropper tool I in parentheses. So that means if I'm on the small selection tool, I can just hit I on the keyboard and it will switch it to the dropper tool. So that can save me some time. And then the small, the, the small selection tool, the direct selection tool is A. So if I'm on the dropper, I can just hit A and I can go right to that tool. And then I go right to this tool. And then A go right to this tool. And then I go right to this tool. And then A, you know. And I. Now the problem is I was limited in my number of colors. So I'm going to um, adjust some of these. Like I want this to be a little bit darker. So I can go up here and see if I have any options. If not, I click on my foreground and I can choose web colors, which I usually like to try for logo types first because they're kind of chunkier. This A, I want to be more turquoise. Honestly, not sure to do with the E's or the M, because I'm not sure I like that yellow. Though it's not bad. I guess it looks kind of fiery. I'd like this to maybe go a little bit browner. <coughs> so it's not the exact same as the other E. Uh, color selecting is hard. It works. See, 
maybe make this a little more golden. And if you want to stay off of the web colors, you just uncheck, and then you have full spectrum control. So you can get a little bit more subtlety. That looks a little dead. Saturated a little bit more. All right. Maybe brighten this one up just a little bit. Okay. So elementals. And then what do I have? I have an exclamation point. What can I do with it? Let's see. Unlike Photoshop, it doesn't show it to you until you hit OK. But let's go in the ultraviolet range. Let's go dark. Nice. Now I kind of liked this, the kind of warm progression here uh, for angry. But the problem is if I go through the whole rainbow here, that's not going to make a lot of sense. So I'm going to try something else here. I'm going to select each of these. We're on this layer now. Hold down Shift and Command. So I can select, up, hold down, let's see. Small selection tool, unlock it, select one, hold down command, select the next, ah, it's doing everything, ah, and it's deleted everything, <laughs> and shift, there we go, just shift, no command. So I can select all of them, and now I'm going to fill them with a gradient. So. See. All right. So sometimes you know how Illustrator will save um, features based on what you've done to save memory. This is one of those those instances where I need to save everything or copy everything over to a new file where nothing's been reduced. Because remember, I live traced this in 16 colors, so it's not allowing for color gradients. So I'm going to copy them all and then file new. Whenever you live trace, it will limit a little bit of what Illustrator is able to do. And we knew we want a new print document. And then I'm going to edit, paste in place all of these features. And the only reason I did that is so I can now have color options in the gradients. <coughs> It's going to help a lot. Okay, so let's let's do that for all of them. Let's pick a gradient. And you see how it will flow through all of them. And I can adjust it. And I can add colors and change colors. And again, you don't want to make it too fussy.
and I'm going to make the tip of the angry not quite fully opaque at like 70. And what that will give is just like this white hot kind of glow to the tip. Okay, right now it's at a perfect uh, zero degree angle, straight up and down, so I can tilt that. If I need to select them first, holding down shift. <coughs> And I can type something in. Let's just try like 15 degrees. And that curves nicely with the, with the back of the E. All right. Now this swish is on a different layer. A different group. So let's just select that, this one. And I think I want that to be a different color as well. Something dark, but colorful, like that dark purple, that works pretty well. And then I'm going to leave all of this black and I'm going to color behind those letters in Photoshop. And I'll also color behind this in Photoshop. But if I wanted to color behind it in Illustrator, this is what I would have to do. Or how, what, I, what I would uh, advise you do. Make a new layer. Lock all of these elements in a top layer. I can get rid of my reference now. And then in a layer underneath, I'm going to draw with the pencil tool. This is why I don't like just flat coloring so much in Illustrator. I would draw the shape behind that line work. Just to show you a little bit. And it's like stained glass. I would put a shape behind my line work shape because my pencil was set to smooth <laughs> it, uh, <coughs> it got out of my line work pretty quickly that's why I'm going to do it in Photoshop but just to show you how it works because some of you will want to do this instead of just changing existing paths you'll create color paths behind and then I'll fill it and I can fill it with a gradient I can fill it with a flat and I can choose what that flat would be. And I can even layer a transparent gradient over a flat if I wanted to. But And I would do that by choosing the flat and then copying and then pasting in place and then filling the replace the, the new one with a gradient and then playing with transparency while it's selected toning it down. So what we have is a gradient on top of a flat, right? And that's pretty cool looking. And now if I wanted to, I could select all of them. And with the pencil tool, it's kind of nice. Just redraw it and that color property will extend through all of it, which isn't bad. Here I can even run it behind the type as well. Give you a little preview. I'll try to do it fast. But that would tie my hands a lot with what I could do in Photoshop if I filled in this banner. But what I might do is fill in the banner and then save two separate EPSs that I can use in Photoshop. Aha. All kinds of creative problem solving approaches I can use. And there's nothing saying you can't uh, rasterize an EPS and then erase from it and mess with it in Photoshop. It's just not best practice. It's better to leave your EPS as an EPS, as a smart layer, so that you can change size without any 
loss of inequality. 